now tuning in to the Going North Podcast with your host, best-selling author, professional speaker, and member of the John Maxwell team, Dominic Dom Brightman. And every Monday and Thursday, we're going to hear the voice of a different author sharing their gifts, stories, and expertise to help you charge forward in life. Now let's get on with the show. And today on the Going North podcast, we're bringing some fabulous humans from across the globe. Today is no different because we got another super special awesome human in the house. Because we have something different today, babe. We have something different today. Not only is this fabulous lady right here a wonderful mother, she's also a wife coach. You heard that right, folks. A wife coach. And considering how high divorce rates are, this is something that we need. And it's the first ever in my world, hopefully the first one for you too. So not only that, she's also a blogger, speaker, as well as an event producer as well. And she's also a ladies ministry leader. So this wonderful lady right here is doing all of that with all this magical experience and is taking over the world, baby, as part of the new book purpose pushers with other fabulous ladies on the move and not just in high heels either so let's welcome the one the only kc yourself miss kimberly cleveland how are you today ma'am i am doing great thank you for having me oh it's great having you too great to have the dean of wife university on the podcast yes so what led you to becoming a wife coach because that's something that is brand new and that is something that is needed i'm sure there's a husband coaching program out there that needs to be done too (laughs) absolutely and there are there are men out there that are helping the men who want to become husbands or those who are already husbands i think for me it was just a question of that my pain versus my passion i've always wanted to be married i've always wanted to be a mother at a very young age my grandparents raised me until i was about six years old and my grandparents were married over 60 years. So I had that example in front of me. They had seven kids and my grandmother, who I look up to, um, had seven kids and was a stay-at-home mom. So like I said, that greatest aspiration for me was to be a wife and to be a mother. I did like most. I, of course, got my education, um, went to college, and soon thereafter um, got married. And like I said, unfortunately, that marriage did not last. And it took me a couple of years to kind of get myself together. And then I did get remarried again. And to no avail, that marriage failed. And so that's why I say my pain birthed my passion because I was really devastated. Never in my wildest dreams could anyone have ever told me that I would have gone through a divorce, let alone two divorces. And it was at that time that I really, in that broken state, really just cried out to God to show me what he intended for marriage, because I knew that if God created marriage, that it wasn't him that had done something wrong. It was us who had done something wrong. And so I wanted him to reveal to me what his divine design was. And so in that, he did show me what his divine design was. And he also showed me that we spend so much time preparing ourselves for our education so that that education can, can prepare us for our career, but we do not put that same intensive focus in preparing for one of the greatest roles we'll have, and that's being a wife and being a husband. And so even though I had that example of my grandparents before me, I really wasn't trained, so to speak. I really wasn't prepared for the inner workings of the relationship and how it works. And so I really spent, after that second divorce, the next, I would say, 18 years, really, again, studying God's divine design, being coached and mentored myself, teaching others what God had revealed to me. And in that process, that's when God revealed to me, hey, you need to share this with other people. You need to go ahead and take that passion of yours for marriage and help other people. Because like I said, at the time, that I was going through my divorce, several of the relationships were around me were also failing. So I was not only experiencing my own pain, but witnessing the pain of others. And um, like I said, I felt so strongly that 
marriage was a beautiful thing and that God created this divine thing. And so we needed to get it right. And so long story short, that's how um, I became affectionately known as the wife coach. And I decided to birth the wife university. So I basically help single women become and wives be amazing wives. I help them to become that good thing. Oh, yeah, that good thing with Tano's, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's right. All the good stuff right there. All the good stuff. But hey, I got to give you credit, though, for still standing up and making a business out of your pain and making it a paycheck because it's something that's running rampant nowadays. I'm pretty sure you could probably correct me on statistic, but if I'm not mistaken, I think it's around somewhere between 50 to 60 percent of marriages end up in divorce nowadays in the U.S. alone. Absolutely. And those rates are higher for second and third time marriages. Yeah. So what do you think is the reason for that besides high expectations or no expectations? It, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of factors that go into that. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, there are a lot of factors. One of the things which I already mentioned is that we're just not prepared. We really had this idea of, oh, you know, this chemistry happens, we're in love. And, you know, he puts the ring on the finger saying, yeah, I want you to be my wife. And we're just going to figure this thing out as we go. And typically, that's where we get in trouble, thinking that we're going to figure it out as we go. Um, we don't realize how much work it is because marriage um, does involve work. We think a lot of times that marriage is going to be that one thing that's going to make us happy or fill that void in our life. When there is a divine design and there is a purpose to marriage and you really need to know that marriage is a system and you need to know how that system works in order for it to be effective. So it really starts there. And the other thing I always tell women, they say, well, what's the first thing that I need to do? And I was like, you need to heal from whatever past pain that you have. Um, because you definitely don't want to take that, carry that into the marriage. You want to be a whole person. You want to be a happy person within yourself before you go into a marriage, because otherwise you're just going to attract what you are, which is a broken person. You guys are going to connect on your brokenness versus your whole um, and healed self. Um, so yes, like you said, there's a lot of factors that go into it, but those are the two top two reasons I would say. Oh, yeah, that's right. You made a valid point right there. It's just subtle. Settling your pain first and healing first, because a lot of folks, they go into marriages thinking, all right, I found the better half. I'm going to be fully whole now that I have them. And then it may be some untreated childhood trauma that just seeps out after a while and then it explodes and then boom, divorce court. Right, exactly. And you're really looking to that other person to heal you or to make you happy. But that works. You have to do that work. They can't do that for you. So, yeah, that's absolutely true. Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, you heard that right, folks. Heard it here from the Dean of Wife University, baby. Get <laughs> your trauma healed. Get yes. your trauma healed. And, you know, another thing is, is that we don't really take the time to know who we really are. And I always challenge women that, you know, you want a guy to put a ring on it, but you really have to know yourself first in order to find He's not only finding that good thing, you also have to find, figure out if this person is the husband for you. And in order for you to do that, you have to know yourself. So you have to do that self-work first. And that's why I was so excited to be a part of this book called Purpose Pushers, is just to help people realize what is their purpose in life. Once you figure out what your purpose is, then you'll know what that complimentary mate is supposed to look like so that you both can be living out your purpose. Oh, yeah, that is right indeed. Can't just think yourself a good thing, but got to figure out why and make sure he's ready for that good thing indeed. Right, exactly. Yes, indeed. Powerful stuff right there. So for self-reflection, what's probably the best thing you recommend women to do when 
doing that self-assessment to making sure they got themselves right before looking for Mr. Right. Well, like I said, first doing that inner work to really find out what they need, what areas they need to be healed in. Um, it really does require you to do that hard self work first of taking a look in the mirror and asking yourself, you know, what do you see? Who do you say you are? You know, who do you say your purpose is? And being honest about those areas that you know that you need to be healed from. You talked about childhood traumas. You know, do you have abandonment issues? Do you have self-esteem issues? Um, have you been hurt in past relationships? And so therefore you've got trust issues. You really have to be honest with yourself about the things that you're dealing with in your heart. Again, it really does start there. Uh, sounds like gold to me. So honesty is the best policy. Exactly. And that honesty starts with yourself, right? Oh, yes, ma'am. And not left indeed. Yes, indeed. That's right. Got to be honest with yourself, folks. Got to be honest with yourself. If you want to have a donut one random day and thinking that'll be a workout, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> The struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one will just stay at two G's. <laughs> no more G's for that struggle. Let's keep it at two. <laughs> yes, indeed. That is the expansion that does not need to happen. That does not need to happen. Well, fabulous work right there. Taking your pain, making it a paycheck with the Purpose Pushers Project. So any advice for those folks out there who are looking to get into a co-author project to take the work off of doing a solo book project? This opportunity really was the best opportunity for me because like you said, it kind of took the edge and pressure off. Um, I had think, been thinking about writing my own book, but really just didn't know how to go about it. And so when this opportunity was presented by Dr. Trinace Richardson. It really was just the right opportunity. Purpose Publishing really walked us through every stage of the writing project and kind of gave us prompts um, and some tools to get us started in the writing process. So I would tell anyone who wants to be an author, if they're hesitant, if they're fearful, if they've got some trepidation, to go ahead and be a part of an anthology to kind of get their feet wet and to get that writing process started. There you go. That's right. I had multiple authors from that wonderful company on this show. Indeed. It's great that the company's still alive and well, winning all sorts of awards and helping people become immortal through the writing. <laughs> yes, exactly. Giving people a chance to have their voice heard. It's a powerful thing. That's right. Powerful than any six pack. That's right. <laughs> yes indeed yes indeed so you mentioned trepidation so for so was there any possible like moments of writer's block or just moments of i guess a popular term nowadays imposter syndrome with writing your entry into the book because that's one thing that some folks may deal with is just dealing with the fear of like all right the looking at the blank screen or the blank sheet of paper and not being sure what to write or what to add on or how vulnerable to be and stuff like that? Well, I definitely say if you are considering a project, you know, consider a project that you need on a subject matter that you are familiar with. So again, Purpose Pushers was good for me because again, I had been on a journey to figuring out my purpose was, even though I felt like I was truly blessed in the fact that I had a great career, you know, I had a house, you know, I had a child, I had a, you know, a good um, job and a good car and, you know, all those material things, but there still was a void inside of me. So I knew when this project came along that I could speak to that. I could speak to trying to figure out what my purpose was and trying to live in my passion. So I would definitely say, if you're considering, make sure you pick a project that is close to you so that it doesn't make the writing process that hard. Purpose publishing really did help us in terms of prompting us on what we were to write about. There's 19 other authors and we were all broken up into, the book is broken up into four different sections. 
And so we were each assigned a section of the book. And so that made it a lot easier, kind of pointed us in the right direction, got us focused. And so that really made the process that much more smoother and easier. Ah, there's the butter. That's what I'm talking about. That's right. The smoothness right there. Indeed. Just grab a random topic and focus on it. <laughs> yes, indeed. That's right. That focus. That's how you push that purpose out there. Yep. Yes, indeed. She's pushing purpose, y'all. Not drug pusher, but purpose pushing. That's right. Yes, indeed. That's right. That's a beautiful thing. No street pharmacy here. <laughs> well, beautiful right there. Congratulations. Another item off the list. So what is next for Ms. KC? Um, I actually was a part of an additional um, anthology. It just was crazy how this came about. But the second book project should be being released around Valentine's Day. It's called Inspired by Love. And of course, we're going to be talking about love and uh, inspirations. And so that's what's next for me. I'm excited about that project also, because as you know, as the wife coach, love is right there at the top of the list. There you go. That love right there. Congratulations. This is like the perfect time of year then for that Valentine's Day release book about love, wife coach. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That's what I'm talking about. Heck, probably can kidnap a bunch of clients around this time of year, too. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just walk up and be like, hey, I see you got that wedding ring. And then just the burlap sack just goes over the head, you know, and wake up in red. And they got all this to-do list, and they got a TR waiting for them when they complete all the tasks on the list. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, bad, bad humor, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it interesting. <laughs> we know the K doesn't stand for kidnapping and Kimberly, I know. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Well, two co-author projects out within a three-month back-to-back period. Yes. All sorts of wonderful things planned to take over the world, making super wives all over the world. Right. That is the mission. That's right. That is the mission indeed. That is the mission indeed. Heck, there, there might even be something out there for the husband coaches. There has to be somebody out there doing it. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, there's definitely a lot of relationship coaches out there, coaches that are also, you know, focused on speaking to the men. Um, so, yeah, they're out there. Oh, yeah. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. So, speaking of coaching, what's prob- probably be the best advice you'd give for someone who is going to be starting off as a coach? Is that the popular thing nowadays? I definitely say, you know, be very clear on who your audience is, who you're looking to to support and reach as a coach. You know, you get out here and it does take a while, you know, stuff doesn't magically happen overnight. So it's important that you just stay focused and uh, remember what problem that you're trying to solve. Um, and that's where you're going to be most effective. That's right. Work in your strength zone. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, a magical question every guest gets to answer on this podcast, and that is if you're to wake up tomorrow and you were 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2020, what advice would you give to yourself? Oh, gosh. I definitely would uh, tell myself to uh, follow my heart, to follow those desires that um, have been placed there. Um, I think for me, again, as we talk about um, purpose pushers, it's all about following um, the purpose that has been planted inside of you. Um, Like many others, you know, I went to college and studied what I thought I should study based upon, you know, family and environment and not really truly following 
my heart and the voice within me. So I would tell myself to just, again, follow my heart. And um, you cannot go wrong living out your passion. Oh, there you go. You can't go wrong living out your passion. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, indeed. It's like setting yourself on fire, metaphorically, and letting the world watch you burn. With passion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> yes, indeed. It's like a preacher on fire. Mm-hmm. That's right. That ghost of holiness right there. it was very descriptive (laughs) yeah the color red does that to me (laughs) (laughs) oh man well anyways for those who want to keep in magical contact with you what's the best way for folks to reach out to you Absolutely. My website is www.thewifeuniversity.com. You can also reach me at The Wife University on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you would like to uh, get clarity on those areas you'd like to work on, if you're truly um, and want to be intentional about becoming a good wife or be intentional about becoming uh, a good thing, you can definitely reach out to me at thewifeuniversity at gmail.com. Yes, indeed. There you have it, folks. The Dean of the Wife University, y'all. That's right. Once the ring is on it, you got to keep it on it. So this is the way to help you keep it on it, baby. That's right. That's right, indeed. Enroll in all of her courses at the Wife University, and then you, too, will get your cap and gown to go with the robe and all the other goods in your closet. (laughs) Yes, indeed. So a pardon word to the folks still listening. Follow your heart. Make sure that, you know, if you want to live a fulfilling life, to, to definitely take the time to sit down and ask yourself those hard questions about why are you here? What gifts and talents have do you have that you can use to serve the world? Thanks a bunch for your listening ears on the Going North podcast. I hope you really, really enjoyed that episode. If you enjoyed the episode, be sure to share it with your friends and family, especially those who love podcasts and love listening to some inspiration and motivation. 